So it's late 1996 going into 97 and my commercial career is booming. It felt like one of the best times and seasons of my life. I was on an elevator uh, at the credit union one day at the side credit union and this boy this little boy is about six or seven he was on the elevator with his mom and he kept staring at me I mean it was kind of weird because we're in this little little closed space and he keeps staring at me and he's looking at me like he saw an angel or something and his mom noticed him with this hard stare and we got off the elevator and she said I'm, I'm sorry she said he thinks you're Denzel Washington and I said, oh, really? She said, he just had a small part in a movie with him. And I'm thinking, this isn't the first time I've heard this Denzel thing. After hearing numerous comments from different people like, what movies have you done? Uh, you look like an actor, you must be famous. Have I seen you before? So I decided to take some headshots and I got one shot that I felt like would work for me and so I started looking for a theatrical agent and in the meantime I was cast uh, in a film called Eye for Eye with, by James Tucker. James Tucker was the director and we shot in multiple locations in Pasadena, all around Pasadena. Uh, BET, Black Entertainment Network, they even came on set and they interviewed me and I felt like a big star. I'm like, man, I'm on my way. And uh, that was uh, a, a quite a delightful thing because I, I had no idea what I was saying yes to. But uh, that, that when BET came down, that was a special thing because then of course I'm watching and I see myself on their program. I was still officially looking for an agent. And I got a referral to an agency called Camden ITG. They were like huge at the time. And the person that referred me put in a good word for me and set up the meeting. So I met with this agent, Karen Goldberg, and we chatted for a minute and she signed me. I mean, she didn't take me through all the little tests and challenges and all. We just had a little light chat and she was nice and she signed me. And she said, be ready for audition. She told me you know how to set up this and my resume and I need some 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 reels from you and so on right and I was like okay and then along with that I signed with this amazing manager named Michael Bruno from the Bruno group so I started getting auditions from both of them Michael Bruno and Camden ITG but I mean, I couldn't seem to book anything. It was crazy. I, I, I was nervous and I'd get in front of the producers and I would just clam up. And I was at all the big studios, Paramount, Warner Brothers, Raleigh Studios, Sunset Gower Studios, Fox on Pico, uh, I was, all the major studios in Hollywood. But again, I couldn't relax. I'd be terrified in front of the producers like I could barely speak and I'm like man something's wrong because normally you know when I walk into a room I light the room up and all that and so I took a few audition technique classes and those were very helpful I just needed to greater understand the process because it's an, a process and you walk in a room and they're expecting to see certain things from you and they're expecting a certain level of skill in your performance And uh, so, you know, I got back out and started auditioning again. And then finally, my first booking, wow, was on a big network. Uh, and it was my worst performance ever. It was on a TV show called Renegade with Lorenzo Lamas. And uh, the director is also on the show. He was directing the episode, Branscombe Richmond. And uh, it, it, was, it was the most awful, awful thing, work that I've ever done. Because Branscombe, I mean, he's on the show, but he kept directing me 
in my scene to act kind of like he acts or that over the top stuff. And I, I didn't, we did multiple takes. He was like, come on, man. He said, come on, man, your, your, your character would behave this way. So, and it just felt unnatural. It was awful, but um, you know, I was thankful to have the job, but it was some awful work and I didn't even use it on my theatrical demo reel. I just took the reel and put it in the, the tape and put it in the closet and kind of forgot about it. But it does get better. My next booking was on a film called Just Right. And it was with Jeremy Piven and Sherilyn Finn. And uh, the shoot was great. It was a great opportunity because I had met the director in my job, the Hollywood Athletic Club. And I didn't know he was a director. He would come in with Cheryl and Finn and some other people and they would ask for pool tables. And I would always get them their pool table up you know, early so they wouldn't have to wait. Like if the, if the wait was two hours for a pool table, I'd get them a table in 20 minutes. One night I wasn't at work and that director came in and he was like, hey, where's the guy that sits on the door? The guy that smiles and is real nice. He said, tell him to call me. And the waitress got a hold of me and said, hey, this guy's looking for you, here's his number. And I called and boom, next thing you know, the very next morning, I'm on set and I'm shooting a film with Jeremy Piven and Sherilyn Finn. Again, just right, it was only four lines, but the director said, work with it. Make of it what you want to, you can expand on it. Just play around with it. So I ended up expanding that thing to about 10 lines. It was, uh, it was great, this opportunity, and, um, and I ended up having all of my improvised lines. All my improvised lines were added into the show. They didn't get cut out, because sometimes the improv doesn't match and it gets cut. And so uh, that was wonderful. What a great opportunity that was to work with those two, you know, at least at the time, very famous actors. Okay. My next role was in a film with like several true Hollywood legends. I mean, these people were big legends now. It's My Party. It was based on a true story and the film starred Olivia Newton-John, Eric Roberts, George Siegel, Bronson Pinchot, Margaret Cho. I mean, it, it just was loaded with like these iconic actors and a host of other actors. And the director was Randall Kleiser, and the film was somewhat of a reunion of sorts because he and Olivia Newton-John worked together on Grease. And uh, I didn't have any direct scenes with Olivia Newton-John, but on a break, we were all eating lunch, sitting at the table. And she said, hi, what is your name? And, and she said, you're, you're very handsome. You're a very handsome young man. So I really got a kick out of that. I ran home and told my wife that. Um, yeah, but Olivia Newton-John, she recently passed away. And, um, you know, I had my, my thoughts of her when we worked on that film together. My next gig. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So my manager, uh, the great Michael Bruno got me an audition for an Aaron Spelling soap opera pilot named Sunset Beach. And I made it to the second round of castings and the casting director Harriet Greenspan, she told my manager, she said, the producers really, really like Mike Pointer, but he needs to play it younger. Like tell him when he comes to producers and all the producers are gonna be sitting in the room tell him to play it younger. And so that's what Michael Bruno told me. He said, hey Michael, it's Michael Bruno. Hi, he said, they really like you over at uh, Sunset Beach, but you gotta play it younger. The, the casting director, Harriet Greenspan, she said, play it younger. And I'm like, okay. And I was a little too young, a little too immature and too afraid to ask him, hey Michael, what, what does play it younger mean? So I didn't ask him, I just said, okay. And so we get off the phone and I had no idea what play it younger meant. And so I went to the callback. The producers were very nice to me and uh, I had a great read, but the role went to a guy named Jason George. And um, 
you know, the, the, the series was tailor-made for Jason. That was his, that opportunity was supposed to go to him. And sure enough, it did. And now I did end up doing an episode of Sunset Beach, but uh, that's a far cry from being a series regular. And I later learned I would have booked the role. I learned that that dress younger means, because I was kind of buff, right? So dress younger meant wear clothes that are looser fitting, not so tight, because the tighter clothes make me look bigger. And I didn't know that. So I was supposed to wear clothes to the callback that make me look thinner. And I had no idea uh, of that. So that opportunity went Jason's way. And uh, hey man, that's okay, right? Because there's more than enough work to go around, right? So that worked well in his favor. I managed to meet a man uh, named Greg Aliopoulos on the Amazing Abs fitness shoot. And he introduced me to a public relations expert that has worked with anyone and everyone of importance in Hollywood and media over the last 50 years, right? His name is James Grant. A uh, very delightful man that has uh, been a blessing in my career. And James helped me work on my branding, like branding my image. And I did a Young Hot Stars segment. Uh, it's like a fashion segment with Sally Richardson. And um, uh, to, to, we start working on this branding thing and getting my name out in media and in the press. Right, so he helped me score a great press article in Scene Magazine recommending the best of segment. Uh, it's with Annette Benning was on the cover. And uh, I mean, hey, look at that Denzel mention again. Did they mention something about Denzel again? There it is again. All right, so after that, it seemed like things really began to take off. In my next role, I played a booking officer in a film called Roll of a Lifetime with Scott Bakula. And uh, it was a supporting role that, that um, was practically given to me because it was the same producers that produced it, that produced It's My Party. It was the same uh, uh, producers that gave me the role. So it, 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 they just offered it to me. I mean, they had me read for it, but it was like, all you got to do is show up and the part is yours. So it, it really pays to keep a good name, uh, not only in Hollywood, but in any industry that you're in. I always wanted to be on General Hospital. I mean, who didn't watch General Hospital in the 80s with the great Luke and Laura storylines? Uh, and so I booked a role and in this episode, uh, uh, that was Lucky, uh, a very young Jacob Young. He was the new Lucky that I was escorting off to jail. And uh, Jacob was going on to build a very successful career. Oh, and, and Jeannie Francis, L Laura, she, she was in my episode. Yep. And uh, so that, that was pretty special because boy, you know, General Hospital and them shows, all my children, they were huge back in the 80s. All right, so my next TV booking was a role that I won. I mean, I felt good about this one because it was on NBC, it was called Built to Last. And it was a sitcom based on the real life story of a stand-up comedian named Royale Watkins. It also starred two acting legends the great Paul Winfield, and the now late Denise Douse, who she recently passed away. And uh, I recently discovered something very interesting about that whole episode and who I worked with. My girlfriend in that episode is Timby Locke. Now, Timby wrote her true life story of love and heartbreak in a novel that has been produced into a Netflix series called From Scratch, played by Zoe Saldana. So that was very, very interesting because when I heard about From Scratch and it being a real life story of Tim, Tim B. Locke, I said, wait a minute, Tim B. Locke, I worked with her years ago. And sure enough, 
uh, there she is. Now, I I'm not going to do any spoilers. Just, you know, watch the movie for yourself and get a box of, of tissues, as they say. Just keep them, keep them there. Keep them handy. All right, so once again, my great manager, Michael Bruno, got me into Susan Glixman and Fern Orenstein's office to read for a pilot that the Baywatch production office was casting. It was called Search and Rescue. Now, Fern and Susan, they moved heaven and earth to get the producer, Greg Bonin, to hire me. They really were excited. They wanted to see me uh, play opposite Tracy Bingham. They wanted to see us pair together. So, I mean, they were like rearranging and not calling certain actors in. And just, I could just tell, it just seemed like they were like orchestrating all the events. So me and Tracy uh, would be together on that series. And, uh, I was cast as Clay Tiernan, a, a search and rescue officer. And due to rain delays, this was crazy. It kept raining at that time. It never rains in California, not the way it should. But at that time, it kept raining for weeks and weeks. And due to the rain delays, the shoot kept getting extended, the shoot dates. And uh, we kept getting paid more money. It was a wonderful shoot. I had such a great time working with that crew. And uh, I don't think I've ever had that much fun on a shoot. We're at the beach every day. And like I say, the cast was awesome. And, um, and uh, what a great time. It was a great time, great group of people, food, you know, and fans at the beach start gathering around and spectators and all. And I was younger and that meant so much to me back then. And, uh, you know, it was a great time. But like I said, it was a pilot. We shot it. We did complete it. They sent it to the USA Network and they declined. They would not pick it up. Why? They said, they're too pretty to, to rescue people. I guess we look too much like models or something, right? So we're, we, we don't look like we can save lives in that capacity. And um, so USA Network passed. Well, like I say, great money, what a great time. And uh, that's okay, because it, it, you know, it appeared that my career was already off and running and ain't no stopping me now. Well, um, it seemed that I was well on my way to having a massively successful career as an actor. And, and something happened to me and made me take a complete turn in the other direction uh, with my life. And people still say to this day, Mike, man, you was on your way, man. What happened? How come you ain't still out there? 